Hi, I'm Toby Hagen here with uh, one of New Zealand's most legendary actors, Peter O'Brien. Yo, and, uh, Paul, how you doing? Paul Shepard in England there. No. Sorry you're not with us, Paul. We'd love you to be here. This is no better than this, man. This is amazing scenery. We're oh. up at uh, Kioki nice Falls. Slice of heaven. Yes. Kaioti Waterfalls. It's a Maori word. If you have the means, we highly recommend coming here. It's fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely breathtaking. So, uh, so Peter, you are uh, an actor. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. You've been, yes. Uh, you've been in several uh, films uh, made in Indonesia. Yep, eight action movies altogether. Okay. And uh, how was the experience of working on uh, an Indonesian film? It was incredible, really. I, in the beginning, I I couldn't stand it because they were so unorganized. I thought right. it didn't seem like they really had any planning. Okay. You know, and you'd wait like 12 hours doing nothing. And it just didn't seem logical, you know, but they get things done and they're very patient, very friendly, nice people. In the beginning, I found it just so unorganized, but they do get the product finished. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's a lot of fun. They don't have a lot of safety measures in place, like when I did my stunts. Really primitive safety, like cardboard boxes, big X fridge boxes, TV boxes, opened up with a couple of mattresses on top of them. And if you jump too far, your history, you know, Osta da Vista, baby, gone. So no insurance policy or anything like that? They reckon they had insurance. Uh, fortunately, I, I didn't have to end up uh, in hospital with a broken back or anything to see if their insurance policy was real. So they did claim to have, I, I believe, Ram Punjabi City had half a million dollar insurance policy on my life but I don't believe that but anyway he said he had it so I mean so you mentioned you did your own stunts I mean what was it for example like riding a motorbike off the the roof onto someone below I mean did they tell you how to do that first or did you just say I think I know what's going to happen and just go with it yeah no that's quite funny good question yeah the first motorbike motorcycles the first stunt I did really decent stunt was in the stabilizer and they had this fight scene going on inside a heroin factory. And I had to ride up this ramp and ride straight through this uh, plywood wall, which uh, hit it at speed, boom, just shoot straight through this wall into this fight scene and, and basically ride into these guys, spin the bike around and do a kick, back kick into a guy and then ride up these steps which uh, that was my first real stunt. No practice, no, uh, okay, we'll do a trial run first, nothing. He wow. said, can you do it? I said, yes, I can do it. Let's do it. Right, camera, action, take one, bang. You got it all in one take. Got it all in one take and the director was thrilled. I was thrilled, I loved it. I yeah. thought, right, let's get on with the next stunt. I just love doing stunts. I would have done them for free. Yeah. I find them exciting, you know, like jumping out of the helicopter, probably that was the most dangerous stunt, I feel, because helicopters are unpredictable, uh, winds, the lake itself was a mysterious lake, they believed in magic, and they, they said this lake is mysterious, it hasn't claimed a life this year, and it's November, and the last life it claimed was last year, and it was a fisherman, the boat they found with all the fish and they never found the body and they never did find the bodies so they warned me the director said if you can't do this stunt I can't find a stunt man in this country who will do it can you do it I said I can do it and I studied the lake at night as the sun would go down I could see because it was a man-made lake it had five rivers rushing in from different angles and I was told that some of the currents were around 90 miles per hour so if you jumped in the wrong place and you hit a current, shoo, you'd be history. And there were still trees growing under that lake because there were villages that used to be under that lake. But that was the most exciting stunt I did. I, I honestly, I really faced death that day. I was arguing with the helicopter pilot. He was saying, no, 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 go down, go down, it's too high. And I'm saying, go up, go up. <laughs> you know, and the director's going down, down, down. And I'm going, hey, hey, up. is a dirty job to be done. And the man to do it is Peter Goldson. And so 
when I jumped, I didn't realize how high it was. I mean, it was 40 meters, I was told, but I became unconscious going through the air. And when I landed, it was, the water just made it like a big hole in vacuum and just spat me out. And I came to when I was coming up through the water. It was sensational. I had all these bubbles and the, the sunlight was coming through the bubbles and I, I was gain, regaining consciousness and I realized, oh yeah, man, I've done it, you know. And I swam ashore and yeah, it was amazing because the village people around that area, there were, there were a lot of villages that had no electricity, primitive people, they were cooking on with wood, wood fires. And they walked for half a day to see that because they knew about the magic of the lake. And they were scared of the lake. And when I did that, they were chanting in their language. And it was like incredible. They lifted me and carried me as if I was some wartime hero, you know. And I felt that day, I felt, yes, so amazing. What an, what an experience. What an experience, yeah. And I really think it's because I, I looked death in the eye and I said, I'm going to overcome you. I'm going to do it. And I did it. And fear, I just rejected it. And that was why I think I felt so great that day. But it was amazing. The next day, the following day, after doing that stunt, we were, I was staying up in this beautiful cottage on the hill, looking right down to the lake. And there were a few vacant cottages next door and left and right. And when I got up in the morning, as I did always, routine exercise, I, I started doing push-ups and suddenly all these kids, about 15 kids, boys, they just started following me. Push-ups, they would do push-ups and they just, I, I started crying, I was so touched. I had to go in, uh, it just touched my heart. They were so um, influenced by what I did with the stunt that they wanted to follow me. And it just touched my heart. I, uh, I had to go in and cry. I, I couldn't shed tears in front of them, but I went in and just cried. Sounds amazing. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, being in Indonesia, I mean, what, did they give you a script in English? Or was the direction in English? <laughs> or did they have translators? How did that all work? They gave me some of these scripts and they were so bad that I just took it upon myself to rewrite. I did it for free. I, I just basically said, look, can I just make my own lines? Yeah, sure, but tell me what they are. Yeah, yeah, I will. And can you make lines for that guy as well? Because he's not happy with his. Yeah, 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 all right. And so, <laughs> and so basically I was in charge of making up the dialogue as we went along. And we just did it as we went along. It was just so spontaneous. And the guy would come up and say, what, what was that you just said? And he'd write it down so we could get a record of it. it was, okay. So that was quite unique. Really, that was something unique. Rambu. Please, Rambu. I beg you not to go. They mean to kill you. This is my private war. Leave it to me. I'm gonna get those bastards. I'm so afraid for you. Today will bring me justice or death. The time has come. It's now or never. They still think I'm out on the run. I must bring this to an end now. And I need you to understand that, Ella. You will always be with me. Something different, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it seems like they have no plan, but but they do. There's method to the madness. Method to the madness. <laughs> but, uh, so, so how did you get involved with the whole acting thing to begin with? Are you a trained actor or? No, you know? no. I was a teacher. I just graduated. I had my teaching certificate, my TESOL certificate, and I was about to travel the, the world. I thought, well, I'll go through Southeast Asia, and you know, I can get teaching jobs in, in Korea, Japan. Uh, Indonesia, probably Vietnam, Thailand, you know, and I got stuck in Indonesia, of course, destiny. 
uh, I was walking the streets, hated it, Jakarta. I was thinking Indonesia, you know, Bali beaches and beautiful paradise. And here I am in this, I thought, hellhole, you know, hot, polluted, traffic jams. And now I love the place. But um, <laughs> in the beginning, uh, it was like that. I'm walking along. I, I had to stay there five days. I was with UTA Airlines. And it was, the deal was five days stay in Indonesia and Jakarta. And so I wanted to get out of there. It was the second day, third day, sorry. And I was walking down to UTA, UTA Airlines, and um, these guys apparently were following me, un unbeknown to me. And it was really hot, so I only had a singlet on and sandals and some Indian cotton long pants. And they thought I was Stallone. And they thought I was Stallone. They, hey, that's Stallone. Come on. And so they started following me. I had no idea. And so I come out of the airlines and getting a bit tired because it's humid. Walk back to the where I was staying. I went and had a shower, and when I came out, I, I'm about to go out for some food, and the guy says at reception, hey, 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 where are you going? The film people have been looking for you. And I said, oh, yeah, film people. Yes, 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 they want to meet you. They want you to be involved in this film. And I said, yeah, yeah, sure, and I'm Santa Claus, right? Yeah, okay, I'm going, man. Come on, leave me alone. And so I, I was walking off, he said, no, please, please, where are you going? At least tell me where you're going. They'll come, and, they'll come there, you know, and they're coming back. All right, all right, I'm going down to Angie's Cafe if they want to see me, oh, you guys. And so I just walked off thinking they were, you know, just clowning with me. So I was eating my fried rice and thinking about my next step of the journey, Thailand, you know, I was envisioning Thailand and all its exotic environment. And suddenly these six guys sat down at my table. And, you know, I didn't really like that. I felt a bit of an invasion, I, especially when I'm eating. I don't like being disturbed when eating and I, I, they couldn't speak English. One of them, he could speak a little and he was nice. Nandi, I still remember that guy from Manado. That's one of the um, areas in Indonesia that does speak a little English. And, yeah. And so he started telling me about the film and um, wanting me to meet this guy Ram Punjabi. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. And so I said, look, if you're serious, just go down the road and get me some really ice cold large bottles of beer please because I'm not drinking beer with ice like they sell here in that cafe it's called Angie's Cafe this place <laughs> Angie Rolling Stones anyway so they've gone and I'm thinking oh thank god finishing off my fried rice and clink clink hear the sound of these bottles on my table look around they're back we're back Touch them cold. Oh, nice. Drank my bottles and I was starting to loosen up. Yeah, up for it. Ram Punjabi. Go to his house. Okay, come on. Let's go. By the way, if you're thinking of robbing me, because you look like gangsters to me, <laughs> my, my passport and US dollars are down at a local bank, so you will only get a few rupees here, okay? This is about all I've got. No, 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 we're not going to rob you. Okay, okay, let's go. So. We're driving through the streets of Jakarta, first time for me to go into this rich area. I see these really massive mansions, really high gates, security guards outside, you know, and we stop. Two security guards peel back the gates. We drive into Ram's estate and I'm led through. And as, I'm, as I pass through the servants' quarters and, and a big room, which was a prayer room, Ram comes out of the prayer room with the red dot here. So it just goes through to the bar. Uh, I'll be with you. So goes through to the bar. He comes in. Right. So please take a seat. What would you like to drink? A whiskey or a beer? And I thought, well, at least I'm going to get out of this a few drinks. I said, I'll have a whiskey and a beer, please. He said, oh, I said, and <laughs> we were up for whiskeys and beers. So got, got talking, drinking, a few beers, a few whiskeys. He liked to drink a few whiskeys, old rum. And he asked me about acting. He said, you know, have you been involved in any drama? Drama at school? I said, oh, a lot of drama at school. <laughs> I meant the fights and the womanizing, not, not drama. And he said, right, good. Okay, what about films? Yes, I lied. I said, look, I just finished reading a book called The Thornbirds. And I said, yes, I've just finished in, in a big production called The Thornbirds, semi-adventure action in Australia. And the name got him. He said, Thornbirds? I heard of that because it was a famous novel at the time you know 
And, he, and I said, yeah. He said, right, okay, so can you fight? I said, definitely. He said, right, we'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Where are you staying? I told him, he said, okay, I'll get my driver to pick you up. Nine o'clock, we'll get you in a fight scene. If you go well, I want you to be the leading man in this film. It's a Rambo copy movie. We're copying a Rambo. We're going to make Rambo Indonesia. You're going to be Rambo Indonesia. I said, okay, let's see what happens. Son of a bitch. Let's get the hell out of here. Hey, what's the matter, guys? Don't you want to play? I'm a big man around here. You won't get away with this. Just ask around. I'm Charlie, and I'm going to hunt you down. Any time, pal. You can find me around here. The name is Rambo. Sure enough, they pick me up in a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Love it, man. Mercedes Benz picks me up. We go to the office. I fight this Chinese martial artist. Bang, 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 boom. Throw a few big hits in. He hits me. I kick him. We do a few real hits. Stop! Come in the office, sign the contract. You're going to be the leading man. And that was it. From the street, from the street to the film star position. In less than two days? Yeah, from the gutter to the throne. It's amazing. <laughs> Life can change in a heartbeat. You never know your destiny. So that was it. But I was stuck with Craig Gavin, my good friend at the time. You know, he was a real, he was a real gangster, old Craig. Uh, real gangster, that guy. I met him in the gym. We both like working out. Although he, he sort of went off it later on in the piece. And yeah, he was a character and I liked him. He was a party goer. And so he ended up coming with me to Indonesia and he was really not happy about this, our trip over. So he came in quite hard. Look, what about our world trip? Come on, we planned it for a year. Come on. I said, okay, look, I'll go back and talk to them and see what they say, you know. And so I did. They said, no, we don't need anyone else. I said, look, you've got to at least meet the guy. I mean, honestly, please. All right, send him in, but we don't need him. He comes back rejected the next day and he goes in harder. Emotional blackmail, come on, man, we planned this for a year. All right, all right, all right. If they, I'll go in and tell him it's either the two of us or forget it. So I did. And I don't know what it was, maybe the loyalty, the Punjabi brothers liked it. They were a bit shocked. They said, wait outside, we'll, we'll talk about it with the brothers. Pull me back in. They said, all right, we'll pay this guy to stay here. He can be your manager. We might even use him. We need a gangster boss, perfect guy for that. And they did use him. And we did two movies together. And I went on and did another six after that. So that was it, yeah. Very good experience. Um, I thank God for that because not everybody gets a chance to be a movie star, um, a main actor especially. Often we can get a chance to be in a small role, but to be the actual leading man, I, I really feel honored, yeah, thankful for that, and grateful for all my experience with the people, the, the stunts, and just being in a movie. It's, uh, I love acting, I love movies. So as you do toby making movies eh? it's it's so uh fun. so one last question then uh, c can your fans expect to see you again in uh, in a film in the future would you be interested oh, in doing that i would love to say yes to that and i would love to give a date and a name and a time uh that's an unknown thing i, I still believe i have uh, another couple of movies in me yeah but yeah as i said earlier it's destiny it's fate it's all in the hands of God. I really don't know. I wish I could say yes. I'm ready. I'm willing. Let's see. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. I'd love to. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank and, you, uh, Toby. It's been a pleasure to meet you, Jessica, and your mom. Yeah. And I'm so glad you can see our country, New Zealand, Aotearoa. It's a beautiful country, as you know. And Thanks, Paul Shepard. Salute you, brother. Keep up a good, the good fight, man. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.